College and Career Success. This is your video for week two of the semester. So just as a overview, whenever you log into our course, I'm going to start at the Start Here folder. This is going to give you all of those resources. You can access the syllabi here. And once you get a little bit more familiar with the course, you may be going straight into the Lessons tab, which is where I'm going to start today. So week two is going to start our chapter one. So if you click into week two, you'll see that you have your four assignments that are listed for this particular week and their due dates. And in the materials folder here, I have scanned the pages for chapter one because I know it's still early in the semester and you may not have had a chance to access your text yet. So I did scan those pages in. You open those up and here is your first chapter. Along with that are your slides for this particular chapter. And I'm going to use those to go through the first chapter as I would if we were face to face so that you can get the information from the chapter and then go back into the actual text if you want to go into more detail. So let me get back into here. You can see again, I'll go over these assignments after I go through the PowerPoints. I'm going to pull up the chapter one PowerPoint. And this is just like an introduction to the course, uh, to the some concepts with critical thinking and the value of education. So the value of a college education our chapter starts talking about, you know, what's the purpose of getting a, a degree in higher education? So obviously there's the, the one that most people go to first, that increased career satisfaction, the salary, the benefits. But research in our text also shows that there's an increased civic engagement and just overall well-being for those students who um, attend a higher education institution. So the next slide has this graphic here that goes over what, what you can expect. The more degrees you have, the chance of the higher education, the higher pay correlation happens. And so that's what this next slide goes over as well. So your introduction to the textbook also talks about, you know, these things, that value and those benefits. So this is kind of a continuation from that introduction section. From there, our chapter goes into the decision-making process. And our chapter likes to rely on this six-step decision-making process. You can see there the six steps that you would go through and then the questions that you would ask yourself to make sure that you're hitting each of those steps. So for instance, if you were going through the decision which college to attend this fall, this is maybe a process that you could have gone through or when you go to make a career decision or any kind of larger decision that you want to make. These are the steps that our textbook kind of suggests that you follow. So keeping your goal visible, that means writing it on a, a post-it note, reminding yourself of it, making sure that you know what you want and keeping that in the forefront of your mind. Gather that relevant information before you enrolled. Maybe you looked at a couple different colleges, you printed off their degree information, you kind of did your pros, cons, which leads into step three. What options do you have? What are those you know, good and the bad? Uh, what would work? What kind of information are you looking for and using and what's your ultimate goal? So you're going into this step four here where you're looking and, and really trying to make that decision. Finally, you make your decision, you take action, and then the one that a lot of people tend to leave out is that sixth step, was that a good choice or not? And sometimes you may not know that for a little while after the decision is made, but looking and reflecting back is an important part of that decision-making process. So chapter one will go more in depth with those six steps, but that's kind of the snapshot of the decision-making process. From there, our chapter goes into what is called information literacy, and our textbook defines it as finding and evaluating information that will help you with a task. And there are different components that have to deal with information literacy. And I think now when we can so easily access tons of information online, it's really important to be able to look at its value, look at the, the source, look at the purpose, and really look to see at the whole process where this information came from. So these are different components and different questions as it relates to information literacy, since as a college student, you'll be relying on a lot of these skills throughout your career, both as a student and as a professional. And so the reason our textbook believes this is important is a research that they gathered says 90% of college graduates indicated that the literacy skills that they learned in college, they were using those frequently inside their career. And part of that is this thing called the craft test. This is part of the information literacy. So whenever you have a source and you're trying to determine how 
valuable, how useful it is for you, going through the currency of it, when was it written, the relevance, how is it connected to your needs, who wrote the information, how accurate is it, and what's the purpose. So that can help walk you through, and it's typically used for websites, although you could certainly use it for different types of sources. So that's part of the information literacy skill set, making sure that you can evaluate and make sure that you're finding information that is of quality and college level material. Part of our chapter also then starts to talk about pe the peer reviewed research process. In every chapter, starting with chapter one, you'll see peer reviewed research articles plugged in that connect to the concepts of the chapter. And so the text file, it was important for you to go over and learn the parts in the process. So a peer reviewed research, oftentimes called peer reviewed or scholarly, goes through a, a process where there's research conducted, reviewed, and then published. And this walks you through kind of that cycle that goes through whenever someone wants to publish their research. And it's not a quick process. So that's why I've had students in the past ask, well, if this was conducted in 2016, why are we just now reading about it in 2019 or 2020? Well, it's because it takes quite a while to gather the research, analyze the data, get it published, and, and more often than not, it's not accepted the very first time. You have to go back and revise before it can be published. But this is where you know professionals in the field will get their information. They're going to rely on these peer-reviewed research. And a lot of other professionals use this to base opinions or mandates or practices on. And so parts of a research article, uh, not all articles are set up the exact same way, but you'll see some overlap with these particular pieces. The abstract, which is a summary, the introduction, which tells you a little bit about the research. You know, what's the question that's posed? What's the purpose of this particular research? The method, who, what, where type of questions that the researcher is going to want you to know so that if needed, the, the research could be replicated. The results, what did they find? And then the discussion, what does it mean? Uh, how can it be applied? Why is it important for people in the field? The next slide here in the, the next part of the chapter goes through just some tips on how to kind of dissect and read those sections. And we will look at a few of those inside our chapters here in the, in the coming weeks, but those just allow you to kind of see how to approach those articles. All right, and then the last part of chapter one starts going into the critical thinking process. So as a college student, we want to just not take things for, for face value. We wanna look at different perspectives. We wanna dig deeper. We wanna look at the evidence. We wanna draw our own conclusions. And that's all part of critical thinking. And so I'm not sure if this slide here looks familiar, but this is called Bloom's Taxonomy, and this is going to be the basis of your discussion forum this week. So this is, Taxonomy, it's the different levels of knowing. So you can see, it starts with the building block down here, remembering, it builds to understanding. You can go all the way to the top there with creating, and you can see all the, the verbs that go along with each file, um, each side of that triangle there. So this is what you wanna build on. You wanna be able to remember information, to understand it, to apply it, and then the ultimate would be to create, and that goes right along with that critical thinking. You'll see there's a little bit more information about the critical thinking there. And our text slides end with Socratic questions, which is the concept of you know, asking questions to get to the answers, to kind of dig deeper. So that is just a quick overview of the slides for chapter one. As I mentioned, I uploaded the chapter in case you do not have your text or you have access to it yet, because for this week you are reading chapter one. So I just did a quick preview of your chapter with you. And then your job is to dig deeper and look through the pages. Uh, you have your first page, which gives you the objectives and the concepts that are covered in the chapter, which we kind of went over there with the PowerPoint. And then I have all those pages there. So again, part of your assignments for this week are to read the first chapter, particularly paying attention to maybe any areas that you know you need to brush up on or through that quick overview of the PowerPoint didn't quite maybe make sense and you want to go through and look at a little bit more in depth. So going back to our Blackboard page here, so now we've taken a look at chapter one. So part of your read and review would be going back into chapter one on your own and doing a little bit more reading. And then here are your assignments. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the assignment folder. 
you see that you have four assignments. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is your discussion. As we alluded to that with the Bloom's Taxonomy. So your discussion forum, just like in the first week, is 250 words, so that's why I encourage you to maybe type it out in a Word document first so you can keep track of the word count and then copy and paste it into your forum. So after you've gone through the chapter and you've paid a little bit more attention and time into these concepts, go back and look at the section specifically on Bloom's Taxonomy. So pulling up the PowerPoint again, Bloom's Taxonomy, that triangle right here, the pyramid, that allows you to kind of see the different levels of knowing. And what our discussion is asking you to do is to describe an assignment you have in one of your classes. So, it, I mean, it could be this class, you can think of another class. So describe an assignment and which level of bloom is the assignment targeting and why. So let's say you're taking a, an academic writing or college comp class and you wanna talk about one of the papers you're going to have to write this semester. You're going to start by describing that assignment first. So give us some context. We're not all taking the same classes. We're not all familiar with the same classes. So give a quick overview of what the assignment is and what you have to do in that particular class. Then, looking at your Bloom's taxonomy, what does that assignment ask of you? Do you have to just remember? Maybe you're describing a particular quiz in a class and it's just based on knowing definitions. You have to remember definitions. Or are you having to do some application? Are you doing some illustrations? Or maybe you're doing some compare and contrasting, so you're doing some analysis. And it could fit into more than one level. So you don't have to try to find just the one level. So maybe you have an assignment where a couple levels are working together, and that's where the why comes in. So what level of blooms and why do those fit together? So as you recall, for a thread, we go in, we click into the discussion post. I'm going to create my thread. I'm going to put it in my subjects, so maybe chapter one discussion, and then I'll put my post and hit submit. So again, remember, uh, for discussions, they are 250 words. And then when you're ready to respond to a classmate, your classmate response, I mean, usually like a sentence or two, is sufficient. You do not have to do 250 words per response. That's just for your original post. Okay, so your original post for chapter one, week two attendance is due by Wednesday. So your original for Bloom's taxonomy discussion is due Wednesday at 11.55 for your week two attendance points. And then you're gonna to wanna to respond to two classmates by Sunday at 11.55. So make sure you're going in after you respond. Um, even if you're the first one or two, maybe give it a day and then go back in and do that response for your classmates. Remember the discussion forums take the place of that in-class interaction you would typically have if you were sitting in the classroom. So that's how you're interacting with your classmates. So that's the discussion, the Bloom's taxonomy right there. All right, our next assignment is your chapter one assignment. So I would pull that up and it's gonna open up into a Word document here. And this is called the STAR method. And so what you're gonna do, just one document here, you're gonna read through the STAR method. You can see that right here is where this is described, the situation, task, action, and result. And this is focusing on mostly like interview situations in which you would go to a, a career interview or maybe a career fair something of that nature. And what is the purpose of this method? Well, right here, to show your adaptability, your problem solving, your project management, and your team working skills. So I'm gonna ask you for this assignment, you're reading this section of the document, familiarizing yourself with the STAR method as well as why the STAR method is used. And here's the actual assignment then. Here's the situation, so you're gonna read this little scenario, and your job is to come up with four interview questions, one that demonstrates each of these four areas. So a question that would have someone discuss their adaptability. It would discuss their problem solving, their project management, and their team working skills. So one question per uh, method that relates to this situation. So four questions total, that demonstrates someone's ability to show these skills in an interview situation. You can, if you want, you can just write in this document right here and then start your questions. Or if you wanna do it in a brand new document, that is fine as well. Or some of you may prefer to go in and click write submission and type your answers right there. Either way, make sure that you either write your submission or upload your assignment and hit submit. Remember their regular document is right here that you can access to use to read.
read through those more in depth. Okay, your next assignment for this week is your chapter one quiz. So you would pull this document up here. You can see there are only seven questions and a lot of these that PowerPoint kind of touched on. But as you look through, it'll tell you each question, how many points each question is worth. I am asking that you complete each question in two to five sentences, um, especially since you do have access to your text, so you can reference that. You have access to the PowerPoint, so make sure you're responding in minimum two to five sentences per response. Also pay attention, a couple of these questions are more than one part. For instance, number one, what are the benefits of attending college? What is the purpose of higher education? Well, right here in the PowerPoint toward the beginning, we went over that a little bit. What are the benefits of education? You know, what's that value? And so you can use that, or if you need to, go back into the chapter. Early on in your chapter one, it'll talk about the value of a college education, and it'll give you the perks and the benefits. So you can use that combination of the PowerPoint and the textbook. So go through, you wanna make sure you answer every question. You can type right in this document once you pull it up. Just make sure you save it. Go back in, into the quiz, and make sure you submit it through there and that'll get sent to me. Okay, and then the last assignment for week two deals with your digital library assignment. So this is your first college resource reflection where you're going to go to a resource that the college provides and kind of spend some time exploring. So if you click on that link, it's gonna take you to the digital library. And first, there's a digital library page. It just kind of goes over some basic information about the library so that you know the kind of resources and time. And right now, they're only online, but you can still book appointments with a librarian. So from there, I go into this. And there's a video, it took only a couple minutes long, it's gonna to talk to you about, again, the digital library, just an overview. And then underneath there, there's a few more videos about scholarly and popular sources, library databases. So you can click around in there, spend some time getting to know the library, getting to know the different things you can do with a digital library, watch these videos, um, make sure that you would know if you had to use this for a particular class, that you'd be able to access it or how would you get the help you need if you needed extra support from the librarian so spend some time looking through and you can see there's a transcript for the videos as well you can even talk to one of the librarians if you want to to find out more information so spend some time on that digital library site and then underneath there it says after you're done exploring the links and videos write a one paragraph reflection so it, requirement right there five to eight sentences click right in there you can write the submission right here, or you can do it in a Word document and upload it. So when I say reflection, it's not just a summary of what you saw on the site, it's what is beneficial to you. What could you use as a student at the college? How could you use this resource? Maybe you've used it already. What was your experience using the resource? So you're doing that reflection, just a one paragraph. Uh, since we can't be in person, this is just allowing you to see the different kinds of resources that the college can offer. Okay, so clicking back into our intro for week two. So again, there's your overview. There's just a rundown of the four assignments that you are working on. Please make sure you submit your chapter one discussion on Bloom's Taxonomy by Wednesday and then respond to two classmates by Sunday. And then the other three assignments, the STAR method, the quiz, and the digital library reflection are also due Sunday as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out, send me an email, we can schedule a, a Zoom session, uh, but please make sure you spend some time you know, going over the PowerPoint, spending time in the text on your own so that you are getting the information out that you need, not only to complete the assignments, but also just to make sure that you're understanding the content and you can use it and apply it later. Okay, hope everyone has a great week.